So in this video, I'm going to be answering questions from you, the community. And in this segment, I'll be going over whether I prefer a luxury hotel versus a first class airline redemption, what I use to track my points and miles, and how to get the best redemption with the US Bank Altitude Reserve Card when traveling overseas. With that being said, we have a lot to cover, so let's just jump right in. First thing from my boy, Matt Welcher asked me a question. If you had to pick between spending your points on a luxury hotel for three nights or a first class international seat, lay flat and all that, which would you pick? And so it's a good question. I, I think it depends on what you are looking for and what point system you're using, right? And so if you said this with American Express MR points, I will probably say the lie flat seat, not because I think the experience will be better because as we all know, MR points are best used for international first uh, business and travel. We don't like typically to transfer points to Hilton and Marriott, although when there's transfer bonuses, it does make a little bit more sense. It really depends on what you're looking for. But to answer this question better, I do have a slide to show you visuals. So I want you to picture this scenario for yourself. So you're flying to Tokyo. And just so you guys know, Narita Airport is in Tokyo. It's NRT. That's the code. LAX is Los Angeles Airport. So the Los Angeles Airport to Tokyo is about 12 hours long. And I use the United Polaris, uh, you know, uh, picture just for to show it's it's something that is going to be a great time in the business class or first class seats you're going to lie flat you're going to have nice food and have nice drinks it's going to be much more comfortable than being an economy and premium economy as well but i want you to contrast that to if you were to stay at the ritz carlton in tokyo for three days and so the thing about hotels is that you can also lie flat in hotels too right and and so the thing is not only can you lie flat but there's a lot more space and you also get to spend usually more time in the hotel too and so if you look at these pictures and you think about what would i want to spend my points on in my mind except for that american express mr point exception i talked about earlier i would 100 percent choose the hotel for three days opposed to the airplane uh, for 12 hours again you know it, it's going to depend on the point system you use but just based on the fact you can really stay in a nice hotel for a longer period and maybe get a medicine hotel too. For example, if you get stats, you get free breakfast, you get all these different things um, as well as maybe, uh, you know, suite upgrades or room upgrades. There's a lot of awesome things that you can, you know, do with that hotel. And so I think that's kind of what I would say uh, about that question. And I would certainly prefer the hotel over the airplane. Although, um, you know, obviously I'd, I'm just like the rest of you. I would love a life flat seat. One of the things I want to mention too, is that, you know, it also depends on your body size. So I'm not tall like Spencer Johnson, who's six foot seven. I'm not super buff like Luke from Loose Points and Miles. I'm like an average size dude, right? And so if I sit in the economy or premium economy, like it's actually pretty comfortable, except for the not live flat seat part of it. Everything is fine. So I don't necessarily need to go into a live flat seat to make my experience comfortable. I, I know I'm going to Japan already, so I think that's pretty awesome. So if I knew that my hotel was going to be great when I landed, regardless of the lounges, regardless of the airplane, I would prefer to have a nice hotel to stay at because that's really when you're spending the majority of your time during your trip. Okay, so that moves on to our next question from Mr. Shad Kerr. You know, uh, Shad's been a member for the channel for about uh, a year now, so I really appreciate you, buddy. I know you're always coming on my channels, uh, coming on my videos as well, so I appreciate all that um, support. Uh, he says, big fan of the channel. What tools do you use to track your points and miles? Any that you'd like to share? And this is kind of an underwhelming answer, but sometimes I, I think it's important to show that simplicity is okay. And so... I use a very simple tool to track points and miles, which is free, and that is Microsoft Excel. And so these are my points, uh, what they look like on Excel. I basically go in there like once per quarter, and I basically update these points just to see and all the different uh, CEO systems that I, I track. And these are the ones I typically track myself. And I just updated this list about a week ago. And so you can see that I have Amex points, uh, Marriott, Chase, Built, Hilton, US Bank, and Southwest. The U.S. Bank uh, point system is generally the one that's lowest because I just, you know, redeem those as fast as I possibly can. I don't wait for them to build up if I can. I just, once I get a targeted 1.5x redemption, and we'll go over that in a moment, by the way, because the next question will go into that. Um, once I get an RTR redemption that's 1.5 on top of the 3.5x from the mobile wallet, it's gone. Like, and I love that about U.S. Bank because I get immediate value so fast. So and it's really awesome. Uh, my Southwest bank is really low because as we all remember, or maybe not, 
on January 1st, I did devalue their points. It's now like 1.3 cents per point as opposed to 1.4. So I basically took my entire Southwest Bank and just redeemed like anything I possibly could. So it's super low now, and I'm really proud of that. Um, the other ones, you know, I just make sure I uh, look at them, make sure I kind of understand where they have, where, where what what's, uh, the numbers are going on. And so Excel is the way to do it. I, you know, it's not that hard. It takes me like maybe five minutes. Um, I don't have to really, it's not super fancy, but fancy is not always going to be the best answer. As long as you understand where your points are, what that number is, and like what you want to do with them, you can use Excel, and I think that's totally fine. Okay. So, uh, Jim is the next uh, question here. Jim is a new member, so thank you, Jim, for joining the membership. He asked this question about the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve. Sam, do you have any experience using the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve overseas? My understanding is that those purchases typically do not trigger real-time or rewards. I'm hoping they do still count as 3x points if Apple Pay or travel purchases, meaning, for example, if I use my Altitude Reserve to pay at checkout for a hotel in Europe, my understanding is that it would not trigger RTR or but would at least count as 3x points. Do you have any experience with that? So my first answer is no, I don't have any personal experience with that, but I have looked your, up your question and try to figure out what the answer would be to that. I know that if you look at Apple Pay specifically, there is a list of foreign countries that do accept Apple Pay. For example, Japan is one of them that's on the list. However, Thailand is not one of them. So for example, if I went overseas to those two places for my honeymoon, for example, I would probably use the Apple Pay in Japan and expect the rich points back, but I would not necessarily expect it back in Thailand, which is not a official Apple Pay uh, provider. Um, I also want to cover the point about the 3x points at different uh, international location because that's pretty important. Um, I want to cover this too just because I know there's been a lot of people on my channel that have told me that they've recently got the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve card and the best way to get that 1.5x redemption is when you sign up for real-time rewards, you can check off boxes of which categories you can do the real-time rewards with. And so to get the maximum amount, it's going to be airline, car rental, lodging and other travel. And so if you check those boxes, when you do your purchase um, in those categories, it'll send you the text message and you'll get that 1.5 for sure because you don't have to do the math in your head. But if you check things like groceries and restaurants, which are options, it'll only give you the 1x redemption. So just make sure when you get that real-time reward set up to only check these four boxes as well. Um, and so I want to cover that because if uh, in the quest to look for the answer to your question, I found this website um, in real time in the U.S. Bank website that actually talks about exactly what is going on there. So, the terms and conditions of real time rewards says that real time rewards text messages are available only for transactions with U.S. merchants. And so, that doesn't necessarily mean that it won't be accepted by international merchants, but it does mean that you have to be careful in what you choose. And so, again, this goes back to the point we all have to crowdsource our data. And fortunately, Frequent Miler has done this already and has a website here. And I apologize for the length of the website, which is obviously optimized for SEO, but kind of annoying to type out. But you probably Google it in some way and figure it out. Basically, you have a list of the U.S. Bank Outside Reserve card and purchases on different airlines versus hotels overseas and which ones had that real-time rewards uh, come up successfully for the 1.5x thing. So you can see on the screen here, a lot of things come up, like, for example, Avianca is on there. You see British Airways is on there. Cathay Pacific Award fees are okay on there as well. You see Emirates, Etihad. Um, and so you can see that there's a number of airlines that can actually get that RTR redemption. Um, if you kind of scroll down the website, which I can't do right now, but if you scroll down the hotels, they're generally speaking, they're not going to have you that. So for your specific question about, you know, a hotel in Europe getting RTR, I don't expect that to happen uh, just based off of the data points that are provided on this website. 